for this video because we are talking about the scalp. Finally getting to the scalp, okay? And I'm so excited because I get to share some really amazing new information you probably have never heard about when it comes to your scalp. Our scalp really is the start of healthy hair. So in this video, I'm gonna share some great information with you. It's gonna transform your view of the scalp and your hair. On top of that, we're gonna address some common challenges that we see, and I'm gonna provide some great solutions that you can even do tonight to start seeing some results within days. And so get your popcorn, get your juice, get your soda, whatever you want to get, get comfy because this is a video you want to watch at the very end. So stay tuned. Okay, so when it comes to our scalp, what exactly is our scalp? So first of all, it is made up of five different layers. So these layers have different blood vessels and then there's the hair follicles and then there's sebaceous glands. Now sebaceous glands are glands that actually produce the oil, the sebum that our scalp naturally has. Sebum is so unique because it has antimicrobial properties that are designed to fight off bacteria and fungus from our scalp. On top of that, just like our hair has a pH of 4.5 to 5.5, our scalp has the same exact pH as well. And I want you guys to start seeing the pH of our hair and our scalp as an a as an environment. All right, 4.5 to 5.5 is the ideal environment for our hair and our scalp to thrive. Now, all of that sounds great and wonderful. However, we still experience challenges on a daily basis when it comes to our scalp. And even if you don't even have these challenges, it would be great for just preventing these things from happening. Okay, so number one, if you have an oily scalp, you'll know because obviously your scalp will feel really, really oil. And you may even have like little red bumps. This is a key indicator of an oily scalp. Now, there's two culprits to this. Number one, either your body just naturally overproduces sebum on your scalp or you have product buildup. All of this becomes an issue because it can clog the pores of your scalp. And when the pores of your scalp are clogged, that's when you're gonna get breakage and also a lack of hair growth. And these are things that you do not want. So a few solutions from the solution box I'm gonna recommend number one is witch hazel. Witch hazel I feel like is an underrated ingredient when it comes to scalp care. Because number one, witch hazel is great for balancing the pH. It helps to cleanse away dirt and oil and it's super moisturizing for the scalp as well. You can add this to your scalp for maybe like five or 10 minutes, rinse it off and then proceed to your shampoo. Food. I'll have more information about this in the description box. The second solution I'm going to recommend is to shampoo your hair. And I know we'd be thinking like, you know, obviously shampoo your hair, but believe it or not, a lot of people do not shampoo their hair. A lot of people co-wash their hair. I have a whole video on this. I'll put the link below in the description box, but co-washing is not going to effectively cleanse your scalp. It's not going to effectively remove product buildup off of your scalp. So definitely be sure to get your hands on an actual shampoo to cleanse your scalp and thirdly I want to say when it comes to products I always say that shampoo is for your scalp and creams like conditioners leave the moisturizers for your hair so the whole goal here is to really make sure that you do not get any of that cream based product on your scalp because that can definitely clog the pores as well now the second challenge is going to be a dry scalp now you know you have a dry scalp when your scalp legit feels dry and sometimes even itchy as well now if this is you what can be a common cause is your shampoo. If your shampoo is too harsh for your scalp, and I want you guys to look at your scalp as like a network, like a, a network like this, a very tight network. Now, unfortunately, cleansing surfactants can be so harsh sometimes that they can mess up and compromise this network in such a way that it loosens the stratum corneum of the scalp. When this happens, this is kind of where you get the water loss or the loss of moisturization from the scalp. So if it's a tight knit network, it's kind of hard for the scalp to lose moisture, hence the reason why, you know, the scalp can hold moisture in well, but a dry scalp, typically the stratum corneum is compromised, it's loose, Hence the reason why it does not hold moisture in very well and you're experiencing a dry scalp. So my recommendation here is to number one, utilize hemp seed oil. 
I feel like hemp seed oil is another underrated oil for the scalp. I love hemp seed oil because it has a comedogenic rating of zero. And a comedogenic rating is a rating that all oils have that determine the poor clogging ability. Number five is the highest, zero is like the least, obviously. And hemp seed oil happens to be zero. So it's great for the scalp. So it's gonna help with water loss and to lock in moisture on the scalp so you don't experience a dry scalp. On top of that, I would really invest in like a hair steamer. And just sitting under the hair steamer for a while, just letting that moisture really soak into your scalp and then follow up with the hemp seed oil to lock in that moisture. Next is gonna be your shampoo. You're gonna to wanna to look for shampoos that have gentle cleansing surfactants. Even better, you can look for liquid shampoos because liquid shampoos are gonna have a less amount of cleansing surfactant versus like the creamy light shampoos. I always recommend uh, the Carol's Daughter Wash Day Delight shampoo. It's like a liquid shampoo, it has a non on it and it's very gentle but also very effective for cleansing the scalp so I would recommend that as well. Okay, and the last challenge is going to be dandruff. I get so many questions on this. And basically, in short, guys, dandruff is the overproduction of dead skin cells. And there's actually a yeast that's living on the scalp of those who have dandruff and is actually feeding off of the sebum. And this is kind of making the dandruff continue to grow as well because your body is like uh, reacting to the yeast on the scalp, almost like an anti-inflammatory response and your scalp is just overproducing dead skin cells. Now, what can you do about it, all right? Number one, I am going to recommend apple cider vinegar rinses out of the solution box because ACV rinses have a great way of shedding dead skin cells from the scalp. On top of that, as you already know, ACV rinses are ideal pH-wise for our hair. The next thing I want to recommend is aloe vera juice. That's also a very antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory type of ingredient to use for your scalp. So something like that is going to help with moisture, but also getting your pH back as well. And then next, of course, witch hazel. I would definitely recommend witch hazel for dandruff because once again, it's gonna to help to remove those excess of oils. It's gonna to help to bring back down the pH of the scalp and it's gonna be great for moisture. And then last but not least, tea tree oil. I feel like it's another underrated essential oil for the scalp. Research has shown that tea tree oil is great for dandruff, like inhibiting and removing dandruff. So you can actually create your own little tea tree oil, hemp seed oil type of mix and apply that to your scalp maybe like once or twice a week until you start seeing a change. So regardless of what challenge you currently have, and like I said, if you don't have this, these are great preventative methods. Definitely consider these different solutions to possibly incorporate to your current regimen to make sure that you do not have any ongoing scalp conditions or even, you know, scalp conditions in the future if you don't have any scalp conditions, all right? So if you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new, I have a question for you, of course. In the whole arena of scalp care, what are some videos and topics that you would like me to cover when it comes to our scalp? I know I focus on hair a lot, but I'm interested in getting your feedback on the scalp and what else you want to know about it. All right, so comment below, let me know, and I look forward to joining the conversation with you. Be sure to check out the Curly Girls Guide to Hair Care and Greens if you have not done so already. I will have the link below for you to check out. And if you're interested in starting a hair care line, you can work with me one on one, and I will also have a link below for you as well. All right, guys, I love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.